Thanks for coming, everyone. As I mentioned before, my name's Teresa. I'm a developer advocate at Sonatype. Um, I've worked in the Java space for quite a while, starting out with JDKs, and I've just had always had an interest, I found, in um, just learning how developers were using tools well that I was building software for. So about a year ago, I moved over to Sonatype to do more of that in an advocacy role. So I do a lot of uh, going out and talking now. And one of the teams that I work with at Sonatype is the team that builds Maven Central. We call them the Central team, because otherwise people get confused and think they're the Maven team. And at least for some of the non-technical folks, that, that is confusing. So we call them the Central team. Um, and so it's not something that I always thought a lot about like before joining Sonatype. Maven Central is just kind of something that's that's there where you download things. Um, and so I wanted to shed some light on the team that is behind it all and what they're working on now and uh, what they've worked on in the past, just to shed some light on what it's all about. So we'll talk about what it is. I'll give a super high level architecture of what's going on behind the scenes and um, what is being worked on now. All right. so. This is, start out with this um, picture of an elephant. It is from a parable from the Indian subcontinent called Six Blind Men and an Elephant. And six blind men basically are tasked with feeling an elephant and then describing what it is. So one, as you can see, grabs onto its tail and says, oh, maybe this is a rope. Um, one grabs onto its tusks one onto its tree or its trunk and says oh it's a tree the other one my feeling the side it's a wall and they all have a really different idea and experience of this elephant even to the point that they're saying the other people are lying this can't possibly be what this thing is um, all that just to say that there are many different experiences to be had with Maven Central and it is a gigantic beast, not unlike an elephant, that takes a vast amount of, of caring and feeding and cleaning, just like a giant beast, um, to maintain. This is really weird looking at the screen sideways. All right, so <laughs> this is roughly what Maven Central is comprised of. So there are three different blind men, per se, or the users that typically interact with Maven Central have the publishers of open source software, uh, users of open source that such as through like Maven or Gradle or various build tools, typing Maven clean install, uh, the users of the search process as well. And so starting in the top right for the publishers, we'll publish into uh, a Nexus repository, which if you're not, not familiar with that, is also si quite similar to Artifactory. It enforces um, basically some rules for publishers to make sure that um, they are fulfilling all the criteria that is required to be published to Maven Central. Um, those packages then go in through a gigantic uh, AWS S3 bucket that is continually growing uh, Maven Central never deletes anything, and I'll explain a little bit more why about that later. Um, well, we also have relationships with Fastly to just bring uh, some more availability to, to users and for search as well. Um, as Jonathan mentioned earlier, Maven Central boring is not such a bad thing um, in the world of Java. We partner with you know, tools like AWS and Fastly because they do scale really well and they do availability really well. And if Maven Central goes down, it's probably because something else in the internet is broken and it will not just be Maven Central likely that is having issues there. And that is something <laughs> that we take a lot of pride in. Um, so to give you a bit of an idea of the scale of this massive beast in I don't think the 2022 numbers are out yet, but in 2021, there were about 500 billion different requests from Maven Central. And about 70% of this traffic is um, 
from bots and automation. But for that 30% is from people um, potentially typing Maven clean install. It would be more, but the default for a lot of these tools is, of course, to take it from your local cache. Um, otherwise, that might be a little bit, bit of a bigger number. Um, so there's 8.8 .8 million components stored in Maven Central, 27 terabytes of data, and 78,000 different namespaces. Not, doesn't quite match up to organizations because some organizations will have multiple namespaces, but just to give you an idea, we have quite a lot of information um, in this beast of an elephant of Maven Central. All right, so what has the team been working on and focusing on lately? Um, so security has been a big top of mind in the last few years for Maven Central um, as in general in the world of Sonotype because that's what we talk about a lot and we do. Um, Sorry, that was not the slide I was expecting. So I wanted to break, break it down into those three users that we talked about before, the three blind men of the element to talk about different ways that Maven Central has and is thinking about security. Um, at least in comparison to some other language repositories, Maven Central is quite safe already. Um, but the target is continually moving when it comes to security, and so there's always room for improvement. Um, and that is in part because um, there has been a really big increase in the last few years that we've seen at least on software supply chain attacks. And to, to put it in simple terms, a supply chain attack is one that comes from um, typically an open source package, that a third party package that gets downloaded, such as from a repository like Maven Central or NPM or PyPI. So this is, it's always been a concern for us to think about security, but even more so now, um, it's been getting worse and worse. All right, so um, as I mentioned before, Maven Central never deletes anything. And the reason for that is, and it is the stability of keeping Maven Central always working for projects. So if someone were to publish an artifact with a bug in it, we don't take it down because there, there could be a lot of people already relying on that. And a question that I hear really often is, well, why, like, log, if you go onto uh, log for sh Log4j, for example, and you go and look and find, you'll find that vulnerable versions are there. And why didn't we just take those down? Well, this is the reason for that. Um, is because we do not want to break um, a lot of people's builds. Uh, but the, in the one time that we actually do take it down is when malicious malware packages are discovered. Um, however, when I asked uh, Joel Orlina, who's been on the Maven Central team for a decade, he said that this was the only time in his memory that this has ever happened. So I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, that these packages got uploaded, were discovered by a security team and had to get taken down. Um, so one of the things that you may not think so much about in terms of security is having capacity for publishers to upload en masse. So when log for shell hit in 2021, um, this is a spike to show, well, remediating a lot of um, users were downloading brand new versions all at once in the span of a few days, but also uh, publishers were all fixing their transitive dependencies with Log4Shell within two or three days. Um, and this was a, a pretty big lift for the team. There were volunteers called in all throughout the company to come help projects and instruct them how to do this um, to be done in, in this scale. But it was possible and it was a good test to show that if there is a huge ubiquitous vulnerability like this to happen again, um, we're ready and able to help the Java community to patch that very quickly. All right, so 
One of the reasons that there are not that many um, packages being uploaded to Maven Central that are malicious is because of this existing uh, technology, or not technology, existing namespaces that exist um, in build tools like Maven and Gradle, and also it is a requirement um, for, for projects to have that are uploading to Maven Central. Uh, so what it is, it's this group ID that you'll often see in POM files that is usually a description of the organization uploading, but having that extra line in there um, to say, this is who I belong to and where I'm coming from is enough to actually prevent a lot of um, uploads and attacks. Um, not all language repositories have had that, but many are getting there, which is, which is great. All right, other thing that Maven Central does is um, there is the option to provide signatures um, from a, pack, a publisher to a user um, to sign packages and say, this is exactly what I was expecting, and there's no malicious actor coming in and exploiting the expectation of a developer that um, I'm downloading the package that I think I'm downloading because Maven Central is just there and it works. Um, so Maven Central has had this for a really long time as well, uh, using the GPG standards, or PGP as they'll sometimes hear it called, but GPG is the open standard. Um, it hasn't had as much adoption as would hope, be just because this uh, system is pretty complex and challenging to use. Uh, I've heard a lot of complaints about this, and so on the roadmap for 2023, that is top of mind for Maven Central this year, is to at least have SigStore as an alternate solution. Um, so that will be coming soon. And this is a signing system that has keyless signatures and th one of the biggest benefits, at least for the Java ecosystem, is that it is way easier for publishers to be able to use. And so the hope is that um, by making it easy for developers that it will be used a little bit more and make those um, publishings even easier. All right, so that is some help for the publishers, um, well, a little bit of both, but for the repo users, um, this is the part that has been the tricky part, I would say, just because the perception that users are, are doing well and being safe, uh, we found, is actually really, really off. Um, so we did some research last year to ask companies how they think they're doing when it comes to um, having secure dependencies. And the perception was, we're super good at managing open source and the dependencies we're downloading from Maven Central. Um, people are really confident. We're great at remediation, for example. Um, in reality, we found that that is not true. Um, so on Maven Central, there are most known vulnerabilities actually have a fix, sort of like the log for shell that we were talking about earlier. That package is there, but there is a fix available. There was a fix available really quickly um, after that vulnerability became known. But people who are downloading Maven Central are not necessarily doing the work to find those fixes, and about 60% of consumers are downloading known vulnerabilities that have a fix available. Um, so the problem of security in the Java ecosystem is not so much on the side of, am I downloading vulnerable packages, but just the person knowing, having some awareness that they're doing it in the first place. So that is sort of what Maven Central has been focusing on now, on having. Um, and it's not an easy thing to do um, as a developer or a company consuming um, these packages. So the average enterprise Java project has about 150 dependencies in it, we've calculated. Um, and the average package has about 10 releases a year. So that could be approximately 1,500 updates to consider over the course of the year, which is quite a heavy lift for any application. Um, and so, you know, as 
as the central team, we don't control what's happening with um, the build tools, which is how developers are interacting with our system a lot of the time, but we do control um, the interface of Maven Central and being able to um, the search that exists there. So that is why that leads into the section of the search users, so that there are some tools here that can help that, that we built to be basically spread some awareness of this issue of all these dependencies being downloaded that are vulnerable and have fixes. Um, so the first thing you need to know is the website URL has changed recently, and it's centralsonotype.org. It looks like this. Um, it's upside down. It has a search bar. The search um, technology behind it itself has changed. Uh, it's mostly been changed, from my understanding, for the development team and making things easier on their side. Uh, but you may see some differences there as well. One of the things, if you go to the new Maven Central site, um, you'll see a couple of, well, first of all, it provides some basic information um, for Maven POM files. But on the side here, this is the part I'm talking about where some new tools are there basically to be able to help at you as consumers understand um, what, where your dependencies are coming from and what's going on. So uh, Bomb Doctor is something that was created by the research team as a really cool way of visualizing dependencies. Um, so if you click on the link, it'll take you to the component. Yep, my Wi-Fi is working. And show you that if you download this component, for example, you're not just taking this in, you're actually downloading, oh, wait, right, there we go, all of these other components as well. And this right here is, is kind of the reason that um, you know, log for, log for shell is still not fully remediated because there can be uses that you may not even realize are there. Uh, it also gives all these different components a score and show, to show you that you know, even if the package you're using is pretty safe, things that are, it are pulling in may not be. Um, so it has an individual score to show, all right, this is the individual project, but aggregate shows that some of the transitive dependencies that are being used might be bringing the score down. Um, so the idea is that you might be able to go in and play around with upgrading these components to the best version. So this one is really bringing the score down um, because it has some known vulnerabilities in it. Um, oh, so this yeah. looks really cool and I'm not quite understanding. Uh, what, what have you broken out there? So you have the Spring Boot Starter Web. Yeah, so this is the, the page for the component and then over here this is the bomb doctor report. That's what I called it, the bomb doctor. Okay. Yeah. So, and that, I just loaded all the pages in case my internet wasn't working, but that's, this is what it would lead to, <laughs> to show this off. And um, this is what it contains in terms of uh, jars nested in it? Yeah. Like yeah. The score, it's, it's based on a few different things. So, um, the main one I've been talking about is security, so known, known vulnerabilities that exist, but it also scores it on um, how popular is this project, just because uh, we've done studies to show that the more popular a project is and the more eyes that have been on it, the more secure it tends to be. Um, and then it also looks at um, open source licenses as well to check whether or not there's any restrictive licenses being used. Um, and that's there just because if, if you're familiar with, with uh, software bill of materials and SBOMs, you, you may also know that um, that is a, a common application of using them is to look at license compliance. Um, so that th all of those things uh, go into the score. Yeah. Sorry, and what is this update to best version? Like there's a button on the right. Yeah, so right now it's... Hope I did not try this out. Hopefully it works. Um, yeah, so right now it goes in and it just updates it like as a simulation. 
I lost my package. All right, I don't know where I went. All right, here. So the score went up from 72, um, just to show the impact that it would have on the overall system. Um, eventually, it may do more than that, but right now, it's just just a simulation to show what the latest version might be. Was that? Um, I. Don't think at the moment you can. Yeah. Yeah, so it probably, it may be difficult to update this because um, it, like, like, likely you would be pulling in this, sorry, yeah, let's bring web starter directly. Um, but I did look at, an upgraded version of, of this one, for example, and, uh-oh, that's not what's supposed to happen. All right, this one was working. This one was a slightly upgraded version, um, and it doesn't have that vulnerable package in it. So um, the best place to start is like the closest you can to the application, just because that's going to be the easiest thing to upgrade. Um, yeah. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to show was, um, so this was an application, like a sample application I wrote that I generated an SBOM for and uploaded it to here. Um, and that's pretty easy to do as well if you want to like play around with your own projects. Um, oh, that's okay, you don't need to see that. Um, <laughs> I had a POM file to show you that you can, there's like a Cyclone DX plugin which is a standard of, uh, an SBOM standard that you can add into your uh, Maven file and then you do Maven clean install and it'll generate one for you, create an XML and a JSON file that you can uh, go into the home page and upload. But uh, I'm not gonna do that right now because this is not cooperating <laughs> well with me. All right. Oh, good thinking. Uh, and this is super small. Oh, thank you. Uh, yep, yeah, so this was my palm file. I added this plugin in and then, well, that one's not going, but when I clean installed at the bottom, it will generate an SBOM for me. Um, and then I pulled it up just to give you an idea what it looks like. This is the, the JSON version because it was a little bit easier to read, um, but it goes in and lists all the components that are being used in my application basically and some metadata about them um, to know the versions and the group ID we were talking about earlier and things like that. Um, so that's it. Give it a try. Um, so all of that is about the upgrading aspect, which is really important. But the other question um, that we asked ourselves is, you know, what about can we just like choose better components in the first place that are, are doing a better job? So that is the other thing that is here on the site. That is this score that you'll see here, basically. Um, so the safety rating, it's not on every project. It's only on about 25,000 different projects. So if you want to know what it's on, you can ping me because I have a master list, but you won't see it everywhere. <laughs> um, eventually, hopefully that will be there. But it just, it just came out a few months ago, and it's um, still a work in progress and so I had slides about this too yep um, so how this came about was basically there's quite a lot of uh, scoring systems for security that exist out there um, one of them is OpenSSF scorecard and so uh, 
basically the central team took all of these, put them into a machine learning model and saw if anything correlated to known vulnerabilities to see um, will this score tell me if my project is safe or not. And it turned out that this one did a really good job. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, Scorecard is a project written in Go. And you can pin it on to GitHub repositories and it will check to see if you are, your project is um, practicing safe project best practices for open source. So um, things like, are you signing your releases? You know, are you pushing binaries and things that aren't source code into your repository? If so, that's not very safe. Um, and there's a whole list of things like that. And so it turned out that this actually predicted known, a project having known vulnerabilities really well um, with 85% accuracy. So that's cool. Um, there's a little chart, sorry, this is really small, to show how much weight each of those um, checks had on, on the score. And it turned out that code review is the single most important thing um, that you can do to show or to have a safer project. Um, do you guys do code review? You don't do code review? Repair program. All right, yeah. that kind of counts. I feel like they should add that in. <laughs> um, cool, not, well, I didn't see as many hands, but maybe you just don't want, okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm concerned, guys. <laughs> Code review is important. <laughs> so outside of just these tests, um, the other part that, that went into the score is um, MTTU, which stands for mean time to update, and it just means how quickly does a project upgrade all of its dependencies um, when a new version comes out. Uh, and the newest version isn't always the best version, but in general, it's been shown that having a good MTTU rate um, is consistent with projects being able to remediate quickly when something does happen. So both of those things led to, I think, somewhere in the 90s of accuracy of being able to show that um, this project has known vulnerabilities. So that is just another thing to look at if you're going in and checking projects. Um, one caveat is that um, things like code review on OpenSF score, SSF scorecard, so it's, it's done programmatically. So a, a project may be doing code review, for example, but they don't have the code review enforcement in GitHub signed and it won't show up. Um, so since this is new, uh, all the scores are probably to be taken with a grain of salt and we're encouraging uh, publishers as well to look at that to make sure um, that they are having the, the score that they're happy with. So, um, But just to, to give an example of a couple different ones, I mentioned code review is important, but then um, not being slow to update dependencies or things like that will bring the score down significantly. Um, I talked about this a little bit already in that the score is pretty accurate, um, but there are, of course, outliers in being able to predict this. Uh, but it has done very well so far. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the thing. <laughs> There's a lot of vulnerabilities that are certainly not reported, but with, to the best of our knowledge, this is this is what we have to work with. So, ideally, this will be able to predict them in the future as well. Um, so that's what's new in Maven Central. Just wanted to show one more time. That, that, that is here too, the two things I talked about for, for consumers to look at. Um, and we would, the team always is looking for feedback from uh, Java developers or users. I've gone to review meetings a few times and uh, pretty consistently they're always talking about like, okay, what, what problems are users having and really care about that. So if you have any feedback um, or any ideas or any issues, uh, let me know, or these are well, the channels to talk about as well. And then 
Um, there's also a couple, if you liked learning about this, a couple of podcast episodes um, that have central team members talking as well about their stories and what, what they've done. And I think it's interesting personally. So that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thanks. Do I hand it back to one of you or questions? You questions? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. sure yeah. Question. Um, <laughs> so you talked about preventing malware with like the namespaces and group IDs. Can you sort of like talk through that? Like, do you, if you, if I want to publish to, you know, org.spring framework, is that restricted to spring maintainers or, or how does that work exactly? Like if I want to typo squat on something under that, could I do it or no? Um, yeah, so you could do it if you like took over someone's account, basically, but that, <laughs> <laughs> which happens, you know, that is a, well, I shouldn't say it happens on Maven Central, but in general, like that is, that is an avenue to do it. But yeah, that, that makes it harder and that you do have to be like part of that organization. Yeah, how, did, how does that work, the, the authentication for like group ID to able to publish? like? Do you, do you, does, is that a manual process on, on Sonotype's side to say you are who you say you are, or, or how does that, what does that look like? I'm actually not sure. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty, I haven't published anything. I'm pretty new to that team, so I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. Great question. Does so anybody know who's published a package? Have you have an account? Yeah. So yeah. We get reports from Sonotype on download statistics, and we want to upload it. There's a guy on our team who has the key to push. So they, they know who Oracle is. It's a person. We have an account. So we own that. We own the org. Yeah. If you want to add someone to your namespace, uh, the process is to well, once you've established an account, uh, you will open a, a Jira issue on the Sonotype Jira and um, ask that a specific developer be given access. They have to already have an account in the Sonotype access, and then. Wait for an approval from someone who's already done the organization for the So I can't use the registered org dot spring framework or something like that, right? Just to kind of sneak it in there. Well, you could maybe now that the top level domains are open, you could you could make a new top level level domain that looks like org, but maybe has a slightly different layer in it. <laughs> then, then you could get. Yeah. Although I yeah. think there is still a manual review, so probably someone at Sonotype would say, "Wait." Yeah. Very likely. <laughs> that was, yeah, essentially what happened with the, yeah, the one I showed here with the, um, so the, these artifacts exist, but these group IDs that were uploaded were, like, they look like, it, it looks like it could be a thing, but it's not. And so that's, that's where the, the tricky part comes in, is somebody going in and saying, yeah, that looks legit, when it may not be at all. And you know yeah. what people do. Whole left pad npm thing, right? Like once if I publish it, I can't, I can't take I can't take my Legos and go home. Like you know, certain. Yeah. Well, know, these publishers. these will delete because it's obvious someone's gone in and is trying to be malicious. But if it's a mistake that someone's made that was then discovered, oh no, this is vulnerable. That doesn't come down. Yeah. Oh, like if it's a transitive dependency? Um, I mean, it'd be, you could try. It would be very difficult, I think, because there could be some ca compatibility issues. Um, yeah, probably the best thing to do in that scenario is open an issue with, with the project and hopefully there's something they can do about it. But depending on how far down it goes, that, that could be tricky too, so yeah. Oh yeah, yes. That's a uh... yeah. 
that is why the, you know, the awareness of users is, is so one of the reasons that awareness of users is so important is because there's, there's a lot of nuances to um, finding vulnerabilities in these dependencies. And they can be, as you saw, like five or six levels deep or possibly more. I see you have, um, so now I have a form doctor, right? Yeah. So is this one, because um, the, the company usually they have uh, their own methods of laboratory. Mm -hmm. right? No, so bomb doctors, um, it's the, the closest thing, as far as I know, to it, it being in a product is it's in Maven Central. Um, but right now, it's, it's like a free um, experimental tool that's there. But it does use, I shouldn't say, it doesn't use like the proprietary data that Nexus has, but it, it does use um, OSS index, which is also like a, a good source of data, but it's more public. Yeah. Yeah, but it's another way of visualizing like what you would see on on Nexus, for example, in I, a way that I think is a little bit easier anyway, in the tree form. And that that fastly is, is a CDN in front of um, S3. Okay. Yeah. I'm wondering because that's oh yeah. The US egress is not really cheap by any stretch. So, <laughs> well, what did they use before they moved in? When did they move to AWS for Pro Storage? Um. Yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. It's a good question. I think it's been there that way for a while, as far as I know. Um, yeah, I believe there's other services as well, but I don't know all the details. Yeah. Maybe you have statistics about what people use to check their dependencies. Like we use dependency dip check plugin, dependency check plugin for just like you put it on the project and oh, yeah. to the solar text in it. Um, but maybe it's not the best tool. Like do you have, I don't know, maybe some generic information about what what people use and what, what is the best thing to use? Um, like free tools? Uh, or? Yes, free, free is preferable. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I mean, I think probably the, the most popular one that everyone's using is uh, Dependabot. Um, you'll see pretty frequently. Uh, we have OSS Index, which is um, a free tool as well, which, as I said, I, I think uses pretty good data and is like a, a tool you can install and put into your project. Um, what else gets used? Uh, Sneak is one that comes up. Yeah. I don't know. Do you guys have any other dependency tools that you like? The, the, the thing about all the, the tools is that you, you will see that not all dependency scanners actually get the same, first of all, they don't get the same tree, um, which is why SBOMs are so important, but then they may also have not the same vulnerability results either, like depending on how they do the scanning. Um, so I, I'd recommend trying them out and seeing which results you like best and by which results you like best. Probably like which one's finding the most real information um, to try it out. But they're all a little bit different, getting different results basically. So. We've been using the one in SonarCube, which has been finding more things than Dependabot. But we, don't, we haven't looked into why that is. Like what, what is Dependabot not doing? Yeah. Right, that's sorry, that's the other big one I forgot to mention. And those OSX index, is it something that Sonotype may maintain? Yeah. It's like a, they're all GitHub open source projects that you can see. Okay, well that's a good job. Like probably a lot of manual work or something. Oh, like to find Yeah, just yeah, like update it and find vulnerabilities reported, it's like constantly going on. I mean, yeah, we have a pretty big team of security researchers that they, that's what they do all day. They find uh, not just job vulnerabilities, like they're currently interacting with uh, like PyPI, which is the, the Python version of Maven Central and finding tons of this type of package there too. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I think 
you know, that type of work is always going to be somewhat manual, but at least by a bunch of different people using it, there is some scalability aspect there, right? <laughs> Yeah. Does it integrate with an ID? OSS index? Do you yeah. integrate with an ID for, like, for example, IntelliJ, if you have security vulnerabilities, does it like highlight mm -hmm. in the form of XML or like SNIC? Or SNIC has a plugin to attack with the IntelliJ and scan it. So does Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so. Uh, Nexus does. I don't believe there's a free version. Oh, I yeah. Think, yeah. Yeah. If you happen to use uh, Nexus lifecycle, it's a pretty good. I think it's a pretty good plugin. Yeah. Sneak is not free as well, right? Is it a free version? It used to be free, and then just for open source, and I think now you have to pay for it. Yeah, that's changing. Yeah, we used uh, in one of my companies before. We use uh, Sonotype Lifecycle, mm. like Nexus Lifecycle. Yeah. And it had a like it was like years ago. It was a pretty cool feature. So it's not just reporting vulnerability. It's just literally telling you this is the version you need to upgrade to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't need to jump to the latest one. Sometimes it's like Sounds in the middle, yeah, and then you don't need to save it. In some cases, saving you like a lot of time. You don't find those versions, you just like follow guidelines. Right, yeah. Because you were saying yeah. it's like 150 dependencies average per project. Yep. <laughs> like, I don't want to copy paste like the name of every dependency and check which one has the vulnerability. So. No, exactly. If you it for me, I will pay for, for the plugin. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not only is it boring, it's a also, yeah, difficult. <laughs> yeah, any other questions? All right, well, happy to stay in chat for a little bit. Um, actually, yeah, I'm good for, sorry, I have to go home and babysit a puppy um, pretty soon, but <laughs> I'm good to stay for a little bit. And yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you.